hello everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Sao and I have been working on design network at Alibaba for seven years. My co-presenter Sranger, who is a distinguished engineer at, uh, at Broadcom in Switch Group. In this talk, we are focused on two challenges uh, in Alibaba distributed training network and the best practice we have had so far. Uh, as soon, logically, we can divide the distributed training into several stages, the normal training stage, the task failure stage due to the any reason, and the, task, uh, and the fault detection, localization, and the recovery stage, as well as the recovery from the checkpoint stage, right? So it is easy to see that reducing the time from the fault detection to the recovery and enhancing the communication efficiency during the normal training, both can directly affect the uh, increase the effective training time. And this leads us to the questions, how we detect, localize, and the recovery from the communication uh, fault as soon as possible, uh, since the sooner the higher effective training time. And how to observe the real network communication behavior of the distribution training to identify the error for organization. I will discuss the further challenge and our current best practice. Uh, Sranja will then cover the second uh, challenge from the chief perspective. Uh, this is a diagram from our second uh, paper this year. And we also observed from the industry that the distribu uh, distributed training increasingly requires a larger class of scales. Uh, for example, 15K GPUs within one port in our design. But if we zoom into these large clusters, we would find that the network components have increased tenfold compared to GPUs, right? Include in the switch uh, optical modules and the fiber optics. Before the failure rate can be significantly improved, a time flood in, in the scale of the network component inevitably leads to the two more network failures. And this is a challenge we are facing. Uh, here are some, uh, some data. We observe a link failure rate of the 0.057% monthly, and the uh, equivalent failure rate for switches. Uh, given the large uh, scale, communication issues happen every day due to the component for, uh, uh, failures. Most of these faults are minor and can be detected and handled automatically. But again, if we can shorten the fault time, the higher training rate we can get. More than that, more than that, okay, okay. more than that, there are not only minor cases in large departments. Uh, based on our, our experience, there have been difficult to localize the packed loss issue caused by various unexpected scenarios. There are two cases can be shared. Uh, the first case, during the, uh, this year, peak solar activities period, a malfunction in five components within, uh, within switch resulted in the undetectable packet loss at the cheap register level, taking one hour to uh, locate the fault component and uh, perform the recovery. The second, asymmetric link studios, where the switch detected abnormal sig uh, optical signal quality from a NIC to the switch and send a link fault signal to notify the NIC to change the link studios. However, due to a bug in the NIC firmware, the notification has not, be, uh, has not responded correctly. The NIC still perceives the link as normal and send data to the prob uh, problematic link leading to substantial packet loss. In both cases, in both cases, quick fault uh, localization and uh, recovery uh, can prevent a continuous pro uh, performance drop or even task failure of the distributed training. So we need uh, do need a uh, um, multiple capabilities that can cover all 
the leak failures uh, for all the component and any reason. So what KPIs do we have? Uh, currently, we have the pin style activities, uh, active, uh, active with the prob uh, probing tools, but they do not represent the real training traffic, right? As a result, cannot cover all folding paths and uh, folding the entries. We have pick back uh, style tools like in band network telemetry, but they do not apply to all training traffic uh, because they increase the packet length and consume bandwidth. We have counter style tools that can cover all training traffic, but cannot cover all network components, and not all job reason, thus failing to detect failures like rows in the five component I mentioned earlier. But we do see the benefit from the counter style tools. For example, the intra job we have can effectively detect pack loss uh, for any reason within a switch and have uh, been deployed for three years in our production. Before reduce, uh, before new production is the final solution. Let's start from the uh, basic theory of the intro agri job. The first, the ingress. The ingress SL alternatively marks a spat bit in the metadata of the packets between the zero and uh, between zero and one every second. The metadata in the inter data processed by the switch. The second, the ingress and uh, the egress ACL count the number of the packet with a bit one and zero respectively. The third, during a period when the ingress ACL set the bit to one, we calculate the difference of packets marked as a bit zero between the egress and the ingress counters. Uh, the, and the, uh, the calculated difference represents the loss count of the bit zero packets. Uh, it's a little bit of the complex, but I think uh, all you can get. The last, similarly, we can calculate the loss uh, for the bit uh, one uh, packets when the bit is set to uh, zero. One more need to note it. We must include a packet that go to the local CPU and uh, rows have been mirrored locally. Since these packet are not folding out, or create locally, uh, uh, which can, could be lead to the unequal e ingress and equal counting. Uh, so the uh, uh, intro agri job uh, is, is helpful. It can effectively the, uh, cover the packet loss during the, uh, between the ingress and the SL for any reason, but it cannot cover the packet loss at the uh, phi and the links. So we do need another solution to do so. Based on this, we designed another kind of style end-to-end -end communication for detecting mechanism. We call it the alternative marking DCP, which can detect the packet loss due to any reason and any component from end-to-end -end and achieve the immediate for detecting and localization. Uh, some thanks for the, to the RFC 8321 for introducing a similar solution. The alternative marking GSP solution is similar to the intra um, agri job uh, I mentioned earlier, but differ in several as aspects. Uh, the first, instead of marking uh, metadata within the switch chip, it utilizes the DCP field in the packet, thereby enable the marking information can be, trans uh, can be transmitted across the end-to-end -end network. A second, rather than having the switch chip perform the DSP modification, this uh, uh, operation is initiated by the uh, NIC end. To do so, the last hop of the network, NIC to Tor switch, can be covered in this implementation. Why is this important? Because the last hop of the network counts for the almost half of, uh, of the network components, and there's a connection between the Tor to the uh, uh, be between the NIC to the Tor switch typically involve the different vendors or different party partners uh, leading to higher failure ratio in practice. And the third, accounting data is based on per port level rather than at the swi entire switch level. So we can cover packet loss within the switch itself 
as well as the interconnect link between two switch or between the nick and the switch. That's achieved the pack loss uh, covered end to end. I would like to summarize the benefit of the alternative marking DSCP. The first, easy deployment. Since without using the reserve bit or extend header, DSCP modification almost will be supported on all platform currently. The second, noise free. Noisy uh, issue can severely affect the monitoring the effectiveness, but using the specific DCP allow us to focus only on training traffic. It means that the network monitors in the application based on their specific need rather than monitoring the all applications, uh, including routes that are not susceptible to the pack loss. The third, real time the photo localization. This is a highlight. As the data is a continuous calculate per link and per, uh, per switch and per link, every single difference indicates the fault happening as well as the location. Uh, the first alternative marking DSP is uh, comprehensive. It can cover all real train traffic or folding components, including last hop, reflect the actual pack loss. Uh, the last this is a unified solution that can support for both the uh, flow-based uh, and the uh, packet-based forwarding model. Uh, which these two are common in the AI or machine, le uh, machine learning network. Uh, finally, uh, this picture shows a real uh, for the case. Uh, well, the device A in that three is connected to device B in that uh, 15. The first column, first column, Show that the NIC performs the DSP switching uh, every 10 seconds. And we can see that the pack loss occurred uh, during the 55 second cycle. And a lot immediately localized the 40 link. Uh, uh, thank you. As this is my, my part, I will hand over to Surrender. Thank you, Shishan. I'll, I'll use a few minutes actually to go. Uh, uh, I think I have five more minutes maybe. It's like, we'll go like, what does it mean in terms of the switch pipelines? So first thing is actually, I think Shisha uh, highlighted that, okay, maintaining and uh, a large scale network presents its own unique challenges. Uh, the link fault isolation is very important. You want to be able to do it quickly. And also you will find that uh, the performance monitoring is also very important. Like let's say you want to make sure that your network is working well. And how do you know that it's working well? Like how, how much performance are you getting? If you're not getting the performance, is it because of a link failure? Uh, because maybe some load balancing is not working correctly somewhere? So how, how would you know all of that? So telemetry becomes very, very important. You're running these billion dollar clusters. You want to get the most uh, performance uh, out of these uh, clusters. And you want to know uh, where the performance issues are and how do you fix it, so you want to know that. So the, by sharing the charts here, I think thanks to Shishao for the capturing them in the uh, in the real network. And uh, so uh, sharing the charts there. And okay, I think link uh, faults, I think you can visualize it. It's uh, more straightforward. Link goes down, AMD will tell you, okay, the counter, there's a discrepancy uh, on the other side of the link. But there's also like how, how well is it uh, performing, right? Like, like so the thing is like the traffic is very bursty and it's very synchronous in the AML networks. And it's actually cyclic as well. Like it just basically repeats step after step after step. Uh, knowing that, like the, uh, you want to be able to look at the data at a fine granularity because that's what will tell you exactly where the issue is. Like let's say if you have, uh, if you're looking at load balancing, right? So it's not enough to say, okay, all the links are equally load balanced, but it's enough to, but you need to know during the uh, step where your communication phase is going on, are all the links equally used? Because if you average it, because let's say communication versus compute, is that let's say even 70% uh, are, are uh, used. So you will not see the issue if you look, look at it at a very uh, gross granularity. So the case I'm making here is you need very fine granularity, even uh, down to microseconds. If you do telemetry with the counter polling, that is slow. So you'll get hundreds of milliseconds. But actually, I find that in deployment and production, like uh, like sometimes when I work with, with um, uh, at the larger deployments to debug, I find that okay, the telemetry that's based on the pull methods, there's hundreds of milliseconds. Sometimes even gets into seconds. Right? That, that's not usable if you want to do fine granularity. 
and there is large amount of stat data, right? It's like there's a, you need an efficient mechanism to pull this out. So you don't know, like it's like you want to collect all the data and then uh, you want to be able to post process. So you are collecting, you are typically collecting uh, more data, like a broad amount of data. So I need an efficient mechanism. And then uh, link events, Shisha has uh, highlighted, we, you need a fast response to the link events. The, so the final point I have here is the, uh, why this uh, high frequency is important. So the picture here that, uh, that I'm showing here on the right, which is thanks to Shao, is like shows that, okay, how the cyclic thing is there, and then when you actually zoom in, uh, when you zoom in, it shows you that, okay, there is, uh, it shows the multiple links that are going on. Is it evenly balanced? If they're not balanced, then you would see like one of the link is very low and the other link is high. Then that tells you, hey, maybe there's something that I need to look at. Maybe this link is down, or maybe this uh, load balancing is not working out pro properly, or maybe the training cycle itself, maybe there's a lot more offer load than what your link capacity is. So you, you, get, all, uh, you get those insights. So here, the, so the next point here I have here is that you want fourth level, Q level buffer stats that are in the microsecond levels, right? It's like, the, like hundreds of microseconds maybe, or tens of microseconds maybe. Like, because the reason I come up with this uh, number, the microseconds, is one is related to your training steps, like how you're cycling when you are doing uh, either TP or DP parallelisms. But that also it has to do with like buffering as well. Like typically you run with a shallow buffer switches and uh, you want to be able to capture things that will not, that not causing, causing the buffers to back up. So you want to get the, this fine granularity there. And then uh, the, you want to get this data to be available as soon as possible for the, for the remediation. And then uh, the, uh, you, usually these are all collector based, so, so it needs to go out somewhere. And it, it needs to, what are the mechanisms that you come up with? Is it needs to be scalable and then it should be efficient. The Alibaba has, Shisha uh, uh, from uh, Alibaba has presented the um, AMD and that provides really very uh, efficient mechanism for the high performance AI fabrics. Okay, so the next one I have, okay. So there's one more thing I want to uh, add here uh, is that, uh, is that like you want these things, if you want to be able to do streaming telemetry, this is all about streaming telemetry. Like this, like the, what, what I mean by that is, your hardware pipeline should be able to stream the data without much of load that is coming from the, 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 the software. You don't want to be slowing down your, um, your control plane, or you, you don't want to have high latencies where you have unpredictable one. So you want a hardware-based mechanism, and that's what is uh, deployed. Uh, is like for streaming telemetry that hel helps you debug the link failures and uh, characterize and, uh, and and maintain your uh, large-scale AI networks. And then I think this is a call to action. Okay. Thanks, Ranja. Uh, call to action. Uh, uh, first, we do uh, we do need the standard NIC API to switch. DSCP based on the user defined fields and get counters. Uh, the second is switch support implementation that enable faster recovery from negative failures detected by the alternative the DSCP marking. And the third, the switch support the streaming telemetry with the granular data at a high frequency, uh, like the Surrender mentioned. The last, we need a definition or the size uh, for rows requirements. Okay, that's all. Thank you.